All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Lisa McLean, and I'm the proud superintendent of Granville County Public Schools. We are so excited you have decided to join us this afternoon for our first 2021 Community Lunch and Learn. Today's presentation is designed to connect with our community partners, leaders, parents, friends, and those who are interested in being informed about Granville County Public Schools. We hope to provide you with great information you may share with your neighbors, friends, and community. We are going to begin this afternoon by sharing with you some thoughts and a brief welcome from our board chair, our chairman, David Richardson. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. McLean. I just want to thank you for taking time to join us at your lunch break. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the vehicle, not driving, uh, but just wanted to jump in and just thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. You're going to hear about some pretty exciting things that we have underway during the 21-22 school year. And also you're gonna hear about some of the challenges, obviously with COVID and just all kinds of other things coming at us. We, we try to be unique in the way we approach our challenges, but especially in light of COVID and other things that we keep safety at the top of our priority list. And so you're gonna hear some of the things our staff and the board have made some decisions to move forward on. Here, uh, what I hope to be one of the, the biggest thing we do here is excellence and achievement for all in education. One of the things that we have prompted from our staff and talked to them about is that every minute counts. And that's something you're going to hear over and over throughout this school year. Every minute of instruction, every minute of social and emotional learning, every minute of just being together counts. And we want to make sure those minutes are meaningful to our staff and to our faculty as well as our community. And so again, we're, we're very excited about you being here today. And we hope that you uh, learn something as you walk away from this meeting and that you can share it with your organization. Because I can just about guarantee you, every one of you here on this call has someone that is impacted by what we do at Granville County Public Schools. And so again, thank you for being the partners you are and I say this on behalf of our board, I mean it for myself, if there's anything we can do to support you and, and enable you to be able to uh, tell the message of Granville County Public Schools, please reach out to us by email or by phone. Uh, we are committed to staying engaged with our stakeholders. And I just uh, wanna give our superintendent and her staff and our educators just such a a big round of applause because they've done a great job kicking off uh, a good school year and we look forward to wonderful things this year. So I hope you are intrigued and engaged and educated by the time you're done here at this Lunch and Learn. So thank you so much, Dr. McLean. Thank you so much, Chairman Richardson. And I'd also like to thank several of our board members who I see are on the call today. Um, thank you so much for joining as well. We're going to get our presentation up at this time. And while we get our presentation up and move to the slide, you see a plethora of leaders and elected officials, parents, administrators, district staff, business owners, community organization leaders. You just see everyone on this call. So we do that because 
everyone is extremely important in the roles you carry uh, to our school district. So allow me once again, not only to welcome you, but to thank you for what it is you do for our school district and for the children. We have the privilege of serving each and every day. So we call this a lunch and learn, just a few housekeeping things, because it's very informal. We're going to sort of speed through. You feel like you're drinking from a fire hose because we know you don't have a lot of time and we respect that. So we're going to download a lot of information. Feel free to um, sort of drop questions in the chat box if you have them. We don't have a lot of time for the exchange, but the individuals who are presenting today are here to take your questions. And if you want to call, call or send us an email, we will be more than happy to get back in touch with you. This meeting is being recorded. So we want to say that up front so everyone is aware of that as well. Now down to business. We are hoping that today's meeting will help dispel some of the myths out there to spell myth from fact and rumor from truth as we all get equipped with good information straight from Granville County Public Schools and we all fill our tool belts with good information. So I'd like to thank our administrators and those educators who did also take time to join us today. Typically this would happen in person, but due to COVID, we've just had to get creative about how we can do everything. And this has been no different. So we're not able to see one another. So we send you virtual hugs and high fives and fist bumps right where you are for joining us in getting creative with how we continue to communicate on behalf of children. So today's focus, it's about sharing, learning, growing, and exploring. So what's happening in Granville County Public Schools? Well, here's a couple of things. For one, we are continuing to emphasize the three W's. Yes, we social distance in all of our facilities as much as possible. And that's written in the North Carolina toolkit. We know some of our classrooms are small. We get that. And that's why it says in as much as possible. So our schools are doing a heck of a job with that. They really are. So if you get a chance to pat them on the back, please do so. We social distance children three feet apart and adults six feet apart in as much as we possibly can. We wash hands and sanitize as much as we can. And yes, we must wear face coverings on the inside of our buildings. Outside, when children are at play or they're outside, and you're gonna hear more about the details of this in just a few minutes. Outside, you may pull your face covering down. But if they're close together, again, understand that three feet distance. If you're close together, it has to come up. And what we do is we try to remain legally compliant with what we're instructed to do. And so you'll hear a lot more about that, but those three W's are emphasized in our district. <laughs> In-person instruction is occurring five days a week this year. Now, last year that was called Plan A, but legislatively some guidance came to us. We didn't have a choice with that. And we're excited about seeing our children five days a week. The children are handling that beautifully. Our educators are handling that beautifully. And for the most part, things have gone well. You heard our, our, our board chair say, we've had a strong start to the school year. We have. We really have at every one of our sites. And so again, if you get to commend our educators and our children for how they've handled that, please do so. Now, I'd like to just share that plan B and plan C are no longer options for our Board of Education to take our district to legislatively. We can't do that wholesale anymore. But if we get to, um, if we need to do it for a classroom, or for a school building because an emergency, because of an emergency with COVID or because we don't have enough staff or because of something that happens at that site in that classroom or at that building, we may have to close that classroom or that building. But wholesale across the district, we cannot do this school year. So I just wanted to be really clear about that. Every minute counts. And that's our theme this year. We're trying everything possible to keep children in school every imaginable way, every minute counts. And our goal is to continue making Granville County Public Schools a wonderful place for children to learn and grow. 
Now, when you see the star pin, and we're continuing to wear our star pins. You'll see some of us with two, three, and some with five. It means something to us. This means we're giving caring service with a, a smile. We still have high standards, high expectations, quality, fast communication, and you should see quality instruction and student engagement in our classrooms. I'm proud of that. And it got reiterated for me um, a couple of weeks ago when the North Carolina Teacher of the Year and last year visited with us and they were pleased with what they saw because they get to see a lot of schools. They were pleased. When we've toured our schools, we continue to be pleased. We're not wasting time this year. We continue to be committed committed to excellence and achievement for all. We know their gaps to fill, and we plan to continue doing just that. The star indicates our commitment, so join us in that commitment. Now, there's some new things happening I'd like to share with you today. Yes, we have virtual a virtual option in our district. It's called our Five Star Virtual Academy, and it's located at our Mary Potter campus. Our Five Star Virtual Academy is an academy whereby parents could apply last school year for their students. They had to make a one-year commitment, and they applied for youngsters who we felt could be successful on that platform. We don't want children to be unsuccessful. So that is up and running quite well. For information about our Five Star Virtual Academy, we're asking the public to reach out to that school's principal, Ms. Weary, Mary Wareheim. Our Cadence Academy is a new academy you'll hear a little more about in just a moment. This is for children who maybe haven't gotten across that graduation line yet, but they're really close and life just happened to get in the way. It's called our new Cadence Academy. You know, those seniors and a few juniors who were right there. But when the pandemic hit, things just didn't quite go their way. Let's help them. Let's help them get across that finish line. Reach out to Principal Calvin Timberlake if you know of any of those youngsters in the community and let's help those babies. We have a new website coming. It will be up and running in December. So we're thrilled about that. You're gonna hear a little more about a mobile parent resource center. Yes, this will be coming around into the community. If we can't always get our parents to come to us because right now COVID has prohibited some of that, we're going to move out into the community. What you will find at all of our schools, again, this is one of our ways of filling holes and filling gaps, is that every single one of our schools is offering 15 minutes of additional intervention time at every school. We know this is important. We know this is critical for every single student. So our principals built that into their schedules this year. And all students in grades three through 12 are being encouraged, strongly encouraged to join a club or some type of extracurricular activity. Yes, it's about academics, but it's also about building some of those other skills. So that's some of what's happening right now in Granville County Public Schools. Safety is also a part of what is at the top of our list. Safety has and will always be right up there with oxygen to us. And we have wonderful partnerships with our sheriff's department, our police departments, and our public safety offices. Safety is one of the things we're continuing to ask our community to partner with us on. We have the mantra, if you see something, say something. This is whether it is over social media or whether you see it with your own eyes, whether you hear about it, please reach out to your school principal. We have zero tolerance for bullying, fighting, drugs, weapons, alcohol. We have zero tolerance for any of it. But if we don't know about it, we can't address it. So please help us. If you see something, say something. Also, don't forget about that Here Comes the Bus app. We want our children safe at the bus stops. And this is one way to make sure children don't leave the home too early and that they're not just standing out there at the bus stops. So make sure if parents need to utilize the service of the school bus, they have that app downloaded. And finally, in the area of safety, for mental health assistance, please reach out to your child's school counselor and or social worker. 
now. I'm excited to turn it over to Dr. Stan Winborn. He is our Associate Superintendent in the area of Curriculum and Instruction, and he's going to begin this segment talking about testing and accountability. Dr. Winborn. Well, thank you, Dr. McLean, and good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to virtually see you all today. Um, as Dr. McLean referenced, the past 18, 20 months or so has been incredibly challenging. Um, and especially so for our students. You know, we, we know that last school year, um, there were extended periods of time when our students were unable to come to school in person. There were also a large number of students whose families chose to keep them at home um, during the pandemic um, portion of the school year. So, you know, those children had um, significant interruptions in their schooling. And we know that many of these families didn't have access to broadband and relied on paper packets in, in some instances for instruction. So um, we have some big challenges ahead of us. Um, the state has just recently released the state testing results from last year. Now, normally in a normal year, um, we would be looking at these results and talking about how they compared to previous years and making our plans and so on and so forth, but things are a little different this year. Um, the General Assembly and uh, wrote some legislation and the Governor, Governor Cooper signed it into law just recently about these test scores. And they specifically removed all accountability aspects from these results. There are no school letter grades assigned as there have been in years past, no growth designations, and absolutely no punitive or accountability measures attached to anything related to standardized testing results for children. The, we have been instructed and the public has been put on notice that, that this information is only to be used to help us understand where students are now and to help us make plans to move forward. It's simply baseline data, a snapshot in time from the end of last school year. And so that's how it's to be used. Um, you know, you, you think about everything that occurred with their disruption in learning, but in addition, there was a, there was a lot of irregularities to the way the tests were administered themselves. Um, they were not given during the normal testing window. Um, there was some variation in the timing and the manner in which these were administered. So it's kind of hard to put a lot of reliability um, on, on those scores. So, um, you know, that being said, we, we are extremely proud because our educators worked to get over 95% of all of our children tested. Listen carefully, that's almost every single child in our district took the tests that they were supposed to. And that was, a, that was a huge accomplishment and very few districts across the state can tout that. Um, you can go on to North Carolina Department of Public Instruction's website and see the differences in districts and the number of children that they actually tested. And of course, depending on which population of children you test, your results might look quite different. But we can proudly say that we tested every single child we could, and those results were more than 95%. I know that uh, our testing accountability coordinator, Ms. Cook, she shared at our board meeting last night that we had children coming in on evenings, on weekends, testing at picnic tables outside while mom waited in the car. And, you know, just we, we basically took the approach of we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that these children are tested and represented in our, in our data. So we're really proud of that. Obviously, moving forward, you know, we're going to continue to have high expectations. Um, we know that we've got a lot of ground to make up. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, but that's not going to stop us from aiming high. We, we strive to outperform the state rate of progress. If you look historically at the data, as a whole in North Carolina, students tend to do a little bit better each year than the previous. And so they have a rate of progress. We intend to surpass that at every level. We also fully expect all of our schools 
as a whole, student body as a whole, to either meet or exceed growth as measured by the state. And we want schools with letter grades only of A, B, and certainly no lower than a C. So those are our, those are our basic expectations. And, and we're gonna be holding those up for everyone in the community as well as our schools. So, you know, in thinking about this challenge we have and this sort of um, disruption in learning, you know, how are we gonna, how are we gonna address this? Well, we certainly had an amazing summer program. We had five full weeks of school this past summer and we served over 1700 children. Um, we shared some of those results of the impact uh, on those students at our board meeting Monday night. Many, many, many students showed significant improvement in some, some testing pre and post that we gave. In addition, we had more than 30 students walk across the stage this summer for a very special graduation ceremony. And Dr. McLean was able to confer diplomas to those students. Um, it was a wonderful event. Um, I don't know, do you wanna to speak to that briefly, Dr. McLean? I know you light up every time we talk about it. I do, it's just thrilling when you know children are excited about their own accomplishments. And that road is not always easy for everyone, but when they finally accomplish it and they realize they've done it themselves and they're proud, um, it just makes my heart happy. And our entire team was there along with our board. You know, we don't diminish it because it's summer. What we've realized in our district is you must have multiple opportunities for youngsters to walk across the stage. And so that's what we do in our district. And no one is any greater than the other. We just want them to have an opportunity to get that credential so that they can carry on with their lives. So thank you for that, Dr. Winborn. I, I just know it was very special to those youngsters. Absolutely, absolutely. That diploma is the same no matter when you get it. Absolutely. It's a wonderful thing. And so to speak to that point, you know, as a whole, all of our students who entered ninth grade four years ago, um, contributed towards our calculation of our graduation rate. And we're really proud that we actually increased our graduation rate from the previous year. And we're just a tick behind the state average. So we didn't let that slip one bit despite the pandemic. We really, um, you know, with the leadership of our principals and counselors and teachers and the work Ms. Salisbury did, we, we made sure we got those students across the stage that, that could. So again, you know, we, we have a lot of work to do. We're gonna be focusing on the basics, the essentials, making sure that we're teaching to the standards and that we're focusing on the artistry of teaching, how to teach, how to keep those students engaged. We're gonna be doing a lot of classroom walkthroughs and collaboration. And as, you know, it's, this isn't about perfection, this is about continuous improvement, getting better every single day. And I fully expect to see that happen. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to a couple oh, of my I'm colleagues. Um, I've got with me, I Dr. Think I needed Felicia Whitaker, um, Director of Elementary Education, and Miss Angie Salisbury, who are each going to take a, a minute to talk about some updates in their grade span areas. So first we have Dr. Whitaker. Good afternoon. Happy to be here. So we are excited about the things that we have going on in elementary ed. We have a day of sharing through the pantry food drive. We also have a focus on social and emotional learning at several of our schools where teachers and administrators are really focusing on providing that social support, social emotional support for students through morning meetings. And we also have school-wide reading programs at several of our schools. Next slide, please. Turn it over to Angie Salisbury. It looks like maybe Angie has stepped away for a second, but these are listed here in this box. Just a I'm few here. of, of uh, okay, go ahead, Ms. Salisbury. I apologize. For some reason, my computer, uh, like, froze, and I couldn't unmute myself. Um, so I am very excited to say that in the uh, all of our hospitals, every student has 30 minutes. Sorry, multiple computers. Every student has 30 minutes every day of an advisor advising period. Am I echoing Dr. 
I'm sorry. I think we might be having a technical difficulty. Are you having some sound issues? I, I can I can take this for you if you like. Take it, Dr. Winborn, yes, please. Yes, ma'am. We'll keep moving along. So I'm sorry, Ms. Salisbury, but these these listed in this chart are just a few of the things that are occurring. We have a we have a new seminar course that's offered each day at each of our high schools. This allows for an opportunity to work on post-secondary plans as well as interventions and and uh, tutoring for areas where students are struggling. We continue to offer a huge selection of CTE internships. CTE stands for Career and Technical Education. So this is work-based education. Um, we had huge numbers of scholarships last year, more than $6 million earned by our students. Um, and you know we, we just have a lot going on. We are not slowing down the number of opportunities that our students have outside of the classroom. You can see virtual guest speakers with business and industry partnerships, Harry Mills, our economic development um, director is an amazing collaborator with us on many of these efforts. And uh, I think the next slide shows a truck fair that for fifth graders that's super popular that we're gonna be having again. Um, and then you can see just the number of credits that were in this past summer, which we already kind of referenced. But um, here, here's just a couple of pictures of some of the things that were going on. This was, this was wildly popular, the kids loved it. And there were a lot of follow up, follow -up activities that occurred as well. Uh, really, really neat stuff. And we, so we continue to have these types of things for children of all ages, because we know that that sort of search for what you want to do in life doesn't start in high school. <laughs> so we, 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 we try to get them early thinking about these things. So I will turn it back over to Dr. Whitaker and uh, apologize for the technical difficulties. Thank you, Ms. Salisbury. Dr. Whitaker. Hi, we're also talking about district transformation and some of the things that we're doing to transform teaching and learning in our district. We are beginning to develop or work on a graduate profile. We will have our first session on that um, tomorrow. We actually have um, representatives from each school across the district coming together to talk about what will our graduates look like? What do we want them to be able to know and be able to do upon graduation? We're also looking at our instructional walkthroughs and partnering with NCDPI to come in and take a look at our teaching and learning, give us feedback, areas where we're strong and areas where we can improve. And we're also looking at, looking at um, focusing on competency-based competency education, which is personalized learning that allows students to advance to higher levels of learning when they demonstrate mastery. Next slide, please. Okay. Also, we wanna talk about what we're doing across our district to promote reading and literacy. This is our book bus, one of our signature um, programs in the district. And our book bus is our idea of the bookmobile. And it travels across the district during the summer, providing students with the opportunity to read, select books to take home and build their home libraries. We are excited and happy to say that this past summer, we had over 3000 visits to our book bus. Vision 2020, that is our literacy um, goal for our district. We want to increase vocabulary, comprehension, language, and performance. In every school, every day, students have the opportunity to read for 20 minutes. Every student reads at home for 20 minutes. Every parent and guardian encourages students to read at home. We're also excited that as a part of our 2020 vision this year, we had a summer reading challenge where students across the district read the 20 minutes a day, at least 20 minutes a day during the summer. And we had a total of over 49,000 minutes that students spent reading this summer. Okay. Next slide, please. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much to our curriculum and instruction team. Now we will hear from our executive director of human resources. Thank you, Dr. McLean. Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to give you uh, just an update of what's going on here in the district as regarding uh, our human resources. Uh, this year, we recently implemented a recruitment incentive for new teachers. So we are recruiting new teachers, new to Granville County Public Schools to serve in our high need uh, capacity, uh, which would be our math, 
science, um, EC teachers, there's an a recruitment initiative or incentive uh, for those teachers up to $3,000. Uh, so if you know of individuals who may be interested in teaching, coming to us from different counties or within this county, we'd love to speak with them about opportunities here in our district. We're also actively recruiting for several positions this year. I know that many of us are seeing the help wanted signs across the county and across the state uh, for different industries that are, are actively recruiting. Well, we too are actively recruiting for teachers. Uh, just a few minutes ago, you heard about the great things that were happening uh, with our curriculum and instruction department. Well, we need teachers to be able to continue to do those great things that are happening in uh, those classrooms. We know that a high qualified teacher is the number one thing that impacts student achievement. So we are definitely on the move looking for teachers to fill those vacant positions right now. Also, we need instructional assistants uh, who is to assist those teachers. Substitute teachers. I can't stress this enough between substitute teachers and bus drivers. Uh, you'll hear more uh, information in a few minutes about our COVID protocols, but if uh, their situations arise where an individual may need, to, may need to be out of the classroom, we have to have someone step in and our subs step in and they willing, they're willing to assist us and help us uh, whenever they can. So there's training that's available for our substitute um, teachers. You can contact our office. Kathy Bradley is our point of contact. She will uh, assist in getting you uh, the information if you need it, or if you know of individuals who want to be substitutes, please have them reach out to Kathy. She will talk about the training, the process, and get them started to work in our classrooms. Also, our transportation director, Mr. Harry Wilkins, uh, he's looking for drivers to serve as uh, to help commute our students to and from uh, home and school. Uh, his number is listed here below as well. Uh, we're definitely looking uh, to increase the number of drivers that we currently have available. If they're unlicensed, we can talk about training opportunities and how to get you trained to become a bus driver. Uh, so a lot of these opportunities are uh, turnkey. Uh, we can work with you, so just feel free to contact us. And also child nutrition assistance. Uh, last year, during our summer program, our child nutrition program served close to, if not a million meals. Uh, we definitely need lots more people uh, to work with that program as we make sure that our students have healthy meals uh, to eat while they're at school. And I just want to tie it all up to talk about our employee assistance program. That's a free confidential program that we do offer to our employees. Uh, so we want to make sure their wellness, their mental wellness is good um, year round because we know COVID has a big strain on our, not only our physical, but our mental well-being as well. So we want to make sure all of our employees are uh, mentally active um, and they're encouraged and uh, making sure that they're being their best self while they're here with us and, and just overall uh, being their best self. So um, if you have uh, individuals that you uh, in our community who are interested in teaching, I'll end up by saying that again, teaching, serving as bus drivers or substituting, please feel free to reach out to our office. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Perry. Our HR office is busy, but we would love to be even busier processing people who would like to work in Granville County Public Schools. So don't hesitate to reach out. At this time, let's receive our athletic update and our alternative learning update from Principal Calvin Timberlake. He's going to begin this afternoon with an update on our brand new Cadence Academy. Yes, for those students, as I mentioned, marching to the beat of their own drum. Principal Timberlake. Thank you so much, Dr. McClain. We are excited to begin our new evening program, which I know is going to meet a lot of unique needs for our student population. Cadence Academy's mission is to deliver a personalized learning opportunity to juniors or seniors just shy of obtaining their Granville County Public School Diploma, who may bear the adult responsibility of providing for their families or they face other barriers that prevented the completion of their graduation requirements. Now we're serving as one program, but we're serving at two different sites in the district. On the Southern end, we'll be serving at GC Hawley on the northern end, Murray Potter's campus. We're using a blended learning model and we're meeting face-to-face -face two days and virtual two days. Tentatively, those hours are 4.30 to 6.30, but should a student have any other needs, feel free to call it and we'll adjust in any way possible to support them. Next, concerning our athletics, indoor athletic events, Face covering is required for all students, staff, and as well as spectators. Outdoor athletic events, no face covering is required when students are actively involved with the activity. 
but cloth face covering is required for students as well as coaches when not actively involved in the activity or they're on the bench or the sidelines. Concerning our spectators, all spectators are expected to wear face coverings in common areas where the crowd may gather on Granville County Public School outdoor facilities. These areas include such as concession stands, ticket booths, and areas where they arrive to the contest. Spectators will be allowed to remove face coverings while seated and physically distanced. Since August 2nd, we have had eight teams have been quarantined due to COVID spread. So beginning November 1st, all student athletes will be required to show proof of vaccination or they will be participating in a weekly screen, screen testing. Thank you so much, Athletic Director and Principal Calvin Timberlake for that update. It's now time to hear from Dr. Pauletta Thompson and Ms. Shelby Hunt concerning our federal, federal programs and after school programming. Thank you, Dr. McLean, and good evening or good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you can see on the slide, our free and reduced lunch rate or low income rates have been increasing each year for the past few years in our county. It is mission critical that our families complete and submit the free and reduced lunch forms each year, primarily uh, because families can benefit from the reduction or elimination of the cost of lunch for their children, but secondly because completing the lunch application allows our district to receive important federal funding for things like additional classroom teachers to ensure reduced class size, uh, supplemental positions such as instructional coaches or interventionists. And also we use a significant amount of our federal funding to purchase instructional supplies and materials for our classroom. So we ask that you help us get the word out in our community to complete and submit these essential free and reduced lunch forms. And with that, next slide please. And with that, uh, Granville County Schools has received an allotment of about $20 million to use over the next three years to address the impacts of the pandemic on our students' unfinished learning and to maintain healthy and safe environments for our students to learn and thrive. The funds will be used for a myriad of, of purposes to include addressing learning loss, mental health and physical health supports, and also innovative programming such as extended day and summer learning. Our district's ESSER spending or our emergency relief funding spending plan can be found on our district's website. Additionally, I am pleased to announce that Granville County has been awarded over $6 million in competitive grant funding since 2018. These funds are used to provide supplemental programs and support services for our families, our students, and our staff that we would not be able to do otherwise. And one of our most recent awards includes a two-year partnership with the University of Maryland to help our district build comprehensive mental health systems for our students and educators. We will begin that work soon at JF Webb and Granville Central High School. We have also been recently awarded, as in this week, uh, we've been awarded funding to support families who have been impacted most by the pandemic. So any student or family experiencing homelessness or displacement can benefit now from our expand, expanded McKinney-Vento and homeless programming. We are seeking community partners to help extend this work as well to help meet the needs, these unique needs of our families who qualify for this additional support. So if you have any um, support that you can provide in that effort, please let us know. And lastly, we have been awarded most recently the Innovative Child Care and Remote Education Support Grant, also called iCares. While we're using the majority of these funds to lower the cost for our after school programs, we're also seeking community volunteers to help with this effort. We're first seeking community partners to help provide virtual instructional support to our students, such as reading with students during our after school programs. So if you know of any volunteers who are willing to support this effort, please let us know. We're also seeking partners who have existing instructional child care options for families in our community because we can use a portion of the care funding to offset the cost of community programs as well. So please contact me if you have any um, interest in, in any of these partnership options. 
I will now turn it over to Ms. Shelby Hunt to discuss our 21st century programs. Hi, good afternoon. We have after school at all of our elementary and middle school sites. As you can see on the screen, our QR reader has the application for our parents to be able to complete for after school. We also have our 21st century after school grant that we have been awarded at five of our sites. We serve West Oxford Elementary, Creek Moor Elementary, Butner Stem Elementary, Butner Stem Middle School, and Northern Gravel Middle School for students to be able to receive after school services, which will also provide them with academic tutoring as well as enrichment activities. We are partnered with our community and we have two partnerships, one with the Boys and Girls Club and the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Office. So we are excited about all of our opportunities that we are giving for, to our students. And we would love to have volunteers that would be able to participate and come out and to read with our students. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thompson and Mrs. Hunt. Now we will turn your attention to our COVID safety update and our district contact is Mrs. Lauren Curtis. Lauren. Thank you, Dr. Murthley. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about today about COVID safety and some of what's going on in our district to help uh, slow the spread of COVID in our schools and in our community. Um, so just a couple of, of safety measures that we have going on in our schools to highlight. Um, of course, our, our board um, continues to support the the, the uh, wearing of masks in our schools indoors at all times. Um, students can remove their masks outdoors when they're physically distanced. Um, we're also focusing on physical distancing indoors. It's a little bit harder this year um, with all of our students in class at the same time, but we're, we're trying to emphasize at least three feet for students and at least six feet for adults. And then um, this is hot off the presses from the board meeting on Monday night. Um, we're gonna be able to start offering some COVID testing on our campuses. Um, in the next few months. Um, we're gonna offer some optional diagnostic testing um, to students and staff that um, are symptomatic or have been exposed um, to a COVID positive person. Um, and then we're going to start requiring screening testing. That's a weekly test. And Mr. Timberlake mentioned this earlier um, for all student athletes. Um, one of the things we've seen a lot since school started is, is lots of exposures and positive cases amongst our athletic teams. Um, and, and that's, that's uh, probably to be expected. It's a higher risk activity where students are in, in closer quarters, breathing heavily and um, unmasked um, during that time. So as a result, our, our board has decided that, that this would be an extra protective me measure that we can take to help slow the spread of, of, of COVID within our, our school and our communities. Um, we continue to engage with, with our community and, and, and research partners because they, they really have the expertise as, as, as public health and, and medical professionals, um, and they, they provide great guidance to us. So we work very closely with Granville Vance Public Health and the ABC Science Collaborative. And again, we've, we've opted to participate in this COVID testing program for our K-12 schools. Next slide. Um, but just a few highlights because it, it, it is our, the trends are are concerning in our in our schools and communities. Um, you can see the Granville County, as all counties in North Carolina, is currently um, marked as red, which indicates a high level of community spread. And uh, percent positive tests are are kind of a leading indicator of, of what's going on in our community. So um, 5.2 percent was where we were on Monday, and our 14 day average is 7% and the target is, is, seven, is 5 percent or less. And for most of the summer, we were well below um, 5 percent, but that number has started to creep up over the last um, week or so. And it's something to keep an eye on. And I encourage you to look at that, that um, statewide COVID dashboard it has some great um, data in it. Next slide. We also have a COVID dashboard so people can monitor what's going on in our school system. This is on the Granville County Public School website and it can be accessed right on the homepage. It's the first link under latest headlines. Next slide. So just to give you an overview of, of what's happening now, this is last week's data. Um, and, and actually we've had a few more cases reported since I, I, I updated the dashboard on Monday, um, but you can see uh, quite a few new confirmed cases for among students and staff. This is actually um, our highest, our second highest total of new student cases in one week. Um, the other was uh, the first, the, the highest total was the first week of school. And then the third highest was the second week of school. So you can see, we've been tracking this data since November and really the, the cases among students are, are at the highest levels they've been since we've been tracking that data. Um, in terms of, uh, next slide. 
In terms of staff impact, Dr. or Mr. Perry talked a little bit about from a human resources perspective, we really, we're literally looking for substitutes because we're having a lot of staff out with 101 days of, of school missed last week in a four day week, um, mind you. Um, so it's a short week. It was still our fifth ho highest total since November um, of 2020 when we started tracking this data. And then next slide. Finally, you can see, as I indicated, a lot more students um, testing positive also means a lot more students being quarantined. 354 students last week were quarantined. Um, when you're quarantined, you're missing somewhere between 10 um, to perhaps as much as uh, 15 days of instruction. It's a lot of lost, lost learning. So it's really important um, to, to make sure that, that our kids are wearing masks and staying distance. But I would also encourage you, you know, one of the things we heard from another superintendent last week was um, three o'clock to eight o'clock or eight o'clock to three o'clock each day, we're kind of able to control what's happening with our students, but it's that three o'clock in the afternoon to eight o'clock in the morning where we really struggle, right? Because um, they're out in the community, um, there may not be as much masking or distancing. So if you can support, you know, that kind of things when, when they're with you, um, we would really appreciate it because that helps slow the spread as well. I would say after athletics, the other place we're getting a lot of exposures is not within our school day, but um, um, at home and from within the community. So, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Curtis. Now let's talk just a moment as we bring this to a close. What can we do together? Well, the first thing I'd like to share on the next slide is we like to have our youngsters eat outside if at all possible during lunch on those beautiful days. And so we're looking into trying to find grants where we can get a few more picnic tables. If you have a way to get a few more, maybe some umbrellas so we can cover them um, and they're not sitting directly in the sun, that's a great way to partner. Also encouraging our families to go on those fall college tours for our older children. And some of the universities are only doing virtual at this time. So don't forget to go online and register. Just don't show up. Um, you might want to check it out and register, but definitely taking advantage of the touring this fall will pay huge uh, dividends. That's for juniors and seniors. Now, beginning in November, make sure when our parent mobile uh, begins going around town, just give us a call. I believe that was in Dr. Thompson's camp. Um, Ms. Shelby Hunt will also be in that area. Give us a call and invite us to come to your community, your, um, your group, your neighborhood, um, maybe one of your community organizations, just let us know you're willing to have us come and partner with you because we'd certainly love to. It's also time for that SAT and ACT, you know, and sometimes youngsters need more than one try at that. So it's a great time to look into contacting the school, making sure your youngster is definitely in the mix. Don't forget North Carolina pays for all 11th graders. But again, if multiple tries are needed, go ahead and get Get one out of the way if you'd like. It's a great time for, for that conversation and encouraging families to begin work on that FAFSA. Yes, those funds with um, Future NC, that, that, that work is necessary. Whether a child thinks he or she might go to college, just getting that completed is really huge and getting that taken care of. It's, it's a big deal, my Future NC. Go to that website and take a look at the resources and helping ensure that that child is prepared, whether they think they want it or even need it right now. Um, having it in the event they do is more important. Number two, thinking about community tutors. That's always a wonderful idea. Thinking about speaking the same language with that issue of reading is always really, really helpful. 20 minutes, unplugging so that we can sit down and touch a book. I'm so proud this summer we partnered with Scholastic once again. We did so during the school year last year and we're gonna do so again. And we mailed Scholastic books home. We still have a few more grade spans whose books came here and we're gonna get those books to those youngsters, but we had books delivered to children's homes. And that's, as you heard, to build their home libraries. We believe in building children's libraries. So continue to talk that language. Make sure you're asking questions like, what did you read? Check that comprehension, check for understanding, making sure they're 
understanding not only what they've read, but can they apply the language? Can they write about it? Can they talk about it? Can they teach you about what they've read? All of those things. Expecting all of us to be on the same page for that 20 minutes of reading will just build a child's vocabulary. Many of those words that will be used on that SAT and ACT. Multiplication and cursive writing are still in the curriculum. Making sure we're checking for that cursive writing um, would be really helpful as well. Good old fashioned multiplication tables any day uh, is a really good thing to do. So I share all of this with you to let you know we love partnering with each and every one of you. Some of these strategies are not new. It's just revisiting them. But I hope you were able to glean something from today's presentation. Excellence is still our standard. And I know we're filling gaps from the pandemic. But as Dr. Winborn said, it's not going to stop us from having high expectations. Every single minute counts. So join us in this work that we're continuing to do in Granville County Public Schools. We value our partnership with you. Our students and our district need and appreciate your support. We thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed your lunch and our time together. We were able to take this picture when I met with our students before the pandemic and I cherish it so much. Look at those little happy faces. I was really happy too didn't mess up my lipstick in this picture, but we have a vision of extraordinary learning and our system in this community includes our partnership with each and every one of you. So thank you so very much for allowing us to keep the main thing, the main thing, and it's our children. Do have a great day. Feel free to reach out to any of us if you need anything at all. You know we will be reaching out to you. Goodbye.